So let's jump into this little bit of rocky matter here and put in some shadow. I'm going to go with the uh, ultramarine blue and uh, alizarin crimson and a bit of raw umber and a hint of white. Same colors that I have for shadow on the, uh, on the, on the right hand side of the painting. I want to spread that purple around throughout the rocks even though the, 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 the face of the rock that's catching more light is actually sort of a, a browner color than, than some of the other areas. I'm still deciding to use uh, the same color for the shadows. Okay. Add a hint of white to that. I'm not going to be too technically accurate as far as shape within the dark areas. It's just fine if that's left to being a little bit interpretive or interpretable I suppose is the word. I cannot use the water to brace my fingers on right now because the water is the water is painted in. And uh, I'll show you that once we have this in place. to wait to that. You know, they're very uh, subtle variations. And sometimes when I'm painting it, I think, oh, nobody will see the variation. But once the painting is done, you do, you, people pick up on those things. So you want to make sure you don't get lazy. You definitely want to make sure that you go through the effort. It's amazing what that can add to a painting. tiniest little details that can be picked up on. I know you don't want to fixate on things. You don't want to become manic and worry about them. They're just worth paying attention to. Okay, so even between this small crevasse, crevasse, crevice, whatever you want to call it, uh, I've left spaces to allow the dark background to show through, just to give a little bit of interest. It's a little more detail in there. But because the purple is so dark, it's so close to the value, or much closer to the value of the dark behind it, it doesn't appear to be busy. If I were to do the same thing using high value, it would look pretty busy in there. Okay, okay I think that's good. Um, what I'm going to do, what can you see here? Okay, you can see these blues, right? Alright. No, I'm going to take the, uh, or the greens, or 
I'm going to take the camera off the tripod and just walk you around for a moment. So as you can see the water is pretty much painted in. I may put a few lighter strokes on the lower left hand side but uh, you know for for what I need right now I think that's it. So I've taken that that hard line that I had on the lower side and I, deci I decided to graduate the values from lighter to darker. Um, I just did not want that hard line there. This is more comfortable. Seems more plausible. But I've used as you can see still a variety of color you have to be close to scrutinize the variety but when you back up you, you certainly see it on the painting in general so water's done oh yeah and here I had this dark line coming off this rock and I think I may just leave it there I may put a speck of something in there but I, I kinda like the way it looks on the painting whoops sorry backing up backing up backing up so this blue I have on the left and on the right hand side of this rocky this rocky rise and it's okay but it's not interesting enough so I'm gonna go into that and work it a little bit um, it just has the appearance of being a little bit neglected uh, the, the the hue that I've used a mixture of cobalt blue and uh, burnt sienna and white uh, it's all too much the same and uh, that's okay I, I kinda knew it when I did it that's the next thing I'm gonna work in so now I'm really you know I started from distance and working my way foreground now as the painting develops I'm going from the foreground and working my way back into the distance <laughs> and these trees they're gonna get some final touches pretty soon some highlights I may throw some intense rock or some intense light on the rock on top there as well and then of course we're off to the sky so I think it's possible that the next time I show you this it'll be a finished painting have a good day guys thanks for watching